Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! News, where the news comes last and the weather comes later. Something has been revealed, I believe this was actually yesterday, no, it was actually this morning that it was revealed. Um, there is an initiative that's in, I assume it's Japan, that encourages players to visit card stores, where if you visit official card stores, so those, like, um, recognized by Konami, Starting from September, you can get the Code Talker um, Link Monster, which is the one you see right here. Like, we have the Code Talker, this N Code Talker, and recently using the anime also X Code Talker. All um, Link 3 monsters. This is a Link 2 monster, just Code Talker, which has an interesting effect, I'd say, and I, I wouldn't mind playing around with it a little bit. It's a Dark Cyrus Link Monster, Link 2, with an arrow up and down. Uh, requires two effect monsters link materials. And it gets 500 attack for each monster, points two, so in that sense it's similar to Deco Talker. It also cannot be destroyed by battle or by an opponent's guard while it points to a monster. So it's not necessarily if it's battling with an, op with an opponent's monster that it points to. It's just, as long as it points to a monster. This could be an opponent's monster, so let's say the opponent you want to force your opponent to want to get rid of this card. But they have in their main monster zone for a big monster, let's say their blue eyes of a dragon, you'd place this in your left, in the left extra zone, to make it point to the blue eyes. So if they really want to get rid of Code Talker, they have to get rid of blue eyes first. But what you can also do is place Code Talker in either of the extra zones, and then place a big monster beneath it. And that big monster, then just by being there and Code Talker pointing to it, it means Kotar can come a battle, or by an opponent's card effect either, which can be really nice. Likely there's some weaknesses in there as well, but it can be nice. Some extra th um, things that were revealed as well. Um, Link monsters will be included in the upcoming two issues of V-Jump, the ones released on October 21st and... Uh, November 20. Why is the December issue at the end of October and the January issue in the end of November? I don't know why, but October 21st and November 21st, the issues of V Jump will have a Link Monster each, I believe. No, there will just be Link Monsters. The Link Monsters that I know about will come later because the new Link Vrains pack that's going to be on sale in the OCG on November 25th will include new support. In the form of Link Monsters, for Gladiator Beasts, and Burning Abyss. So for Burning Abyss, you could say, yeah, uh, a new, like, form, if you want to call it that, of Dante. Because we've had, we have a Fusion Dante, we have an Xyz Dante. Is the Ritual a Dante? I'm not sure, I barely use the Ritual. Maybe, maybe it's Beatrice. It's, it's version of Beatrice. Gladiator Beast? I'm not really sure what to expect for a Gladiator Beast Link Monster, to be honest. I I find that one hard to come up with, although I can understand why Gladiator Beast would want that, because they kind of want to, especially with their new support that came uh, from the Arc 5 anime, and then obviously like there was in, in real life, you'd want to have, um, like you can as chain even more monsters together, and you keep putting your fusion ones back in the extra deck if things go well, and then resummoning them, sometimes even summoning two fusions at once, like the new Gladiator Beast fusion ones, which is Andabate, I believe, at least it's a Japanese name, something like that would be its TCG name as well, I believe. That summons a second Gladiator Beast fusion from your extra deck, but that's just not possible um, under Master Rule 4, so this, I assume the Link monster for Gladiator Beasts will be a minimum of Link 2, and will, at minimum, have two arrows pointing either downward or diagonally downwards to allow for that multiple fusion play. Otherwise, I'd be very surprised. Now, that's not the only thing I want to mention, because I'm going to go to Duel Links. I've not actually talked much about Duel Links at all, but quite a few things have been revealed for Duel Links as well, coming in the near future, really the next month, the next few months. Early September, we're going to get a new event, Duelist Chronicles Set Sail for the Kingdom, where a long-awaited character will finally be obtainable. Play through a new type of event, so a kind of event that we haven't had yet, so that'll be interesting. And it's based on the original series. I do believe I already know what character that will be.
but um, just in case someone hasn't seen certain leaks, I don't want to be uh, someone to spoil it, so I'll keep that quiet. Mid-September, there's a certain character that's going on a rampage who you can do as much as you can to obtain exclusive rewards. That reminds me of the Mokuba event that's currently ongoing. I believe that ends tomorrow. We can just keep battling them um, and then get some cool cards from that. Late September, there's a new event and, and Mysterious Tower suddenly appears in the real world. Enemies never before seen lurk inside, face them with new strategies and techniques. I'm interested to see what that is, just to, to introduce some new kinds of challenges. I do like that. And then late September, a massive update, and this is something I'm really excited for. A massive update is coming to Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, a new world. So there's like dual world, and you have like you have four spaces you can go. You have the fountain, the card shop, the card builder place, and then the arena. Like you have those four areas where duelists can appear. There's just a new world, so maybe like a second set of like multiple areas in the new world, maybe that. Addition of new characters, not just character characters. New missions and special login bonuses. I am... My theory... At the moment, I haven't thought about this much, too much. But my current theory is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. But sure, there's still some characters and things they could do with the original series, like... Arcana isn't a playable character. They could make Arcana a playable character. Um, there's still probably some other characters that are interesting that um, could become playable. Bonds, perhaps. There's a few others that one could think of, but with multiple new characters and, and the fact that it's a big update, I think it'll be Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Um, I suppose that'll be a nice addition. It was Duel Links is, I suppose, quite different from like the first two, three sets, like the first two main sets and like the first subset when I when I believe that's around when I started um, Duel Links, and like compared to now, the meta has changed so much. I don't play like the top competitive of Duel Links um, because I just don't spend the amount of time on Duel Links that is required to earn those cards. Although I am building towards an Eteria deck at the moment, um, which doesn't seem too hard to get, although it does require two Ultra Rare um, Mirror Walls, which I still have none of, I believe. Although, no, I don't think I've recently got the first. And after that, I, I want to get Enemy Controller from Kaiba. So that's still left to do. Uh, the Eteria deck seems pretty good. And actually obtainable because I missed a good amount of the um, Joey stuff from the Joey event like last month or something, and then I unfortunately missed even getting Merica's playable character. So I hope there will be a repeat of that Merica event like there was a Pegasus. Because I started right, yeah, I started playing Duel Links right after the previous, like right after the original Pegasus event ended. So we can probably look back on like when I started. In the early October, there will be a Duelathon. Increasing your dual meter, we've had that a few times. You can get daily and cumulative rewards. And then in mid-October, a new character coming. And with new characters already coming in that massive update late September, I wonder if that new character from mid-October is related to that massive update. However, the this is the little hint that they give. Dueling me will give you a spook that will put you in your grave. So I, I'd say the hints there are spook and grave. Spook. Scaring someone, grave, graveyard, uses zombies. Like I, I hadn't read this part yet, but like remember how it just said that I that Bonds could be an interesting character from the original series. Dueling me will give you a spook that will put you in your grave. That's that's Bonds. Bonds plays a zombie deck and he tries to scare people. Except in like Battle City, he didn't manage. Like he tried to scare people and didn't manage to scare Yami Bukura at all. And Yami Bukura actually beat him to get to the finals. But um, I think that's Bonds. The, the, my my bet my bets on Bonds. If you can come up with any other character that fits dueling me, we'll give you a spook that'll put you in your grave. Let me know in the comments, and um, that'd be fun to discuss, I suppose. New content will be added later, balancing the issues. Um, yeah, I suppose I'll mention as well, new mini box coming in, Echoes of Silence. Um, there is a video, if you play Duel Links, you can just go to the official preview video. I believe it's on the official Yu-Gi-Oh! channel as well. You can see exactly what's in there. I just know that Silent Magician Level 8, I believe, is the cover card, I think. So, check that out if you're interested to see what you can expect on August 31st. That was the news video for today. Good night.
and good news.